Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Kberg Duke 2 flip front helmet. Kberg's Duke 2 is the helmet for people who want good value for money from a flip front helmet and it seems riders who pay close attention to the Sharp ratings. If you're not aware of Sharp, it's an additional set of tests here in the UK that rate a helmet's safety performance out of a maximum five stars. This lid is a five star performer and that fact comes up very frequently in the customer reviews for the Duke 2. Something else in this lid's favour, as I stand here today, this helmet has 622 customer reviews on our site, and that's the most of any helmet on Sports Bike Shop. Apart from giving everybody some serious bedtime reading, that shows just how many people rate their Duke 2, as an average score of 4.72 out of 5 is pretty damn respectable. So let's run through the essential details of the helmet. It's a plastic shelled flip front that can be legally worn with the chin bar either up or down. It has a pinlock protected outer visor, there's a sun visor behind that, and a micrometric buckle strap fastener. The lining's fully removable and there's room behind the cheek pads for intercom speakers. So this size medium Duke 2 weighs in on our scales at 1566 grams, which is much lighter than I would expect a plastic shelled flip front helmet to be. It actually makes this the fourth lightest of the 16 flip front helmets we've weighed for these videos. So if lightweight is a big priority for you, then there are no issues at all with this lid. The chin bar lifts on this large button on the front. You need a good grip around the chin bar itself with finger and thumb, push the button and then lift the front. At the top, it settles really well into a raised position and it'll take some force to make that inadvertently slip forward and block your vision. But all the same, there's a switch that lets you lock it into the raised position anyway, which then makes it legal to ride with the chin bar up as this helmet is dual homologated. But that's not something I'd recommend for long as the balance of this helmet is quite biased towards the top and the front when the chin bar's up. So it's not really ideal in terms of weight distribution. One other quirk I've noticed with the switch here that locks the chin bar up, you can accidentally knock this switch forward when you have the chin bar closed. If you do that, the next time you lift the chin bar, it'll lock open, it won't come back down, and you probably won't know why. If that happens to you, remember that you need to pull this switch back and it'll free the chin bar to be lowered again. And if you're thinking, what sort of idiot would knock that switch forward, then you're looking at that sort of idiot as it happened to me while I was wearing this lid. There are vents for the chin and the head on the Duke 2, which are both quite basic in their design. On top, this slider draws back to allow air in, which comes through two holes to the inside of the liner. I found it did allow some air in, but it wasn't the most effective vent I've tried, and quite a few of the customer reviewers seem to agree with me on that. It might be because the two inlet holes in the EPS impact liner are both at least partially covered by the foam comfort lining, which might explain why I didn't feel the full flow of air. There are no exhaust vent holes at the rear of the lid either, so it's quite hard for warm air that's built up on the inside to get out. At the chin, air flows through these metal grills, and it comes through inlets on top of the chin bar to bring in some cooling air. Those vents are permanently open, so there should always be a flow of air to the inside of the lid. Thankfully, that air doesn't need to do all of the work as there is a pin lock insert included with this helmet. You'll need to fit it yourself. There's nothing unusual about that. And it's a pin lock 30, so it's their most basic grade of insert in terms of coverage and fog resistance. It covers the essential parts of the visor that you need to see where you're going, so it keeps clear vision where you need it the most. And I found it fine, but some of the customer reviewers didn't like the letterbox effect that that created for them. You definitely need to have that insert fitted as there's a very clear difference between the area that is covered and the parts of the visor that aren't covered. And you can probably see that from the onboard footage of me riding in this lid. It took an hour or so of riding in very cold weather, around three degrees Celsius, but dry for that pin lock insert to be overpowered and start to mist in my experience. There's only so much you can expect from a basic pin lock 30 and those conditions were beyond it. The visor has five stages as it lowers. Personally, I would have liked a stage to keep the visor open very slightly, perhaps by about this amount, to allow some airflow to the inside, which would have helped the pin lock do its job and stay mist free for longer. But I found that that's the smallest gap I could have, and that was a bit too much. And then the next stage down is just the visor closed. But looking through the customer reviews for this helmet, no one else has mentioned that being a problem. So perhaps that's just a personal thing for me. The visor on this helmet changes really easily. There's a link to our how-to video all about that in the description below. The sun visor operates on a switch on top, just here. And the last part of the travel in either direction locks it either fully down or fully up. The sun visor doesn't come down very far. The reviewers who've had problems in the past with sun visors in other helmets touching their nose say that's a good thing. 
Equally, some reviewers would rather it came down further to give them a bit of extra protection from glare. That sun visor's not anti-mist coated, but that's no surprise really in a sub 200 pound flip front helmet. So let's move to the inside. The lining for this lid is comfy enough without being luxurious. In smaller helmet sizes, there's quite a thick lining as this helmet comes in only one shell size and the padding gets thicker as the helmet size gets smaller. In standard trim, there are foam inserts between the headliner and the cheek pads, which will deaden some of the road noise beside your ears. If you want room for intercom speakers, you just pull those inserts out and that's what makes the room for the speakers. On the inside of the chin bar, there's a recess as well, which makes space for an intercom microphone and the boom that brings that microphone in front of your face. That's pretty important as one of the frequent comments on this helmet is that riders find their chin will touch the inside of the chin bar. It's not the case for everybody, but in certain circumstances, you're gonna need all the room you can get in the front there. The strap fastener for this lid is a plastic micrometric buckle like you'd find on pretty much every flip front helmet of this price. So let's move on to sizing and approvals. The Cabo Duke 2 comes in sizes extra small to extra large, and as I said, one shell size covers all of those. It's approved to ECE 2205 for use on the road, and unsurprisingly, it's not got the ACU gold stamp for use in competition or on track. But what it does have is that very attractive five-star performance in the sharp tests. Those tests are pretty stiff, and it's a real credit to this helmet that it achieved five stars. It's also worth pointing out that Sharp's testers record how many of the impacts that they carry out make the chin bar come open, and the Duke 2's chin bar stayed closed in 90% of impacts. The average performance in that measure on Sharp is an 82% success rate, so that 90% rating is a little above average. Reading through the multitude of customer reviews for this lid, I'd summarise them as saying this lid's a no-frills helmet that does a really good job for the money and scores brilliantly in Sharp. Based on my experience of it, I'd say that's about right. The Duke 2 is a basic, decent helmet that does what you need. There's nothing fancy about it, but it does the job. It's made a lot of riders very happy and has that five-star safety rating as well. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Kberg Duke 2 flip front helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.